said earlier, something that really stood out to me, that we, especially as Christians, can see work as a result of the fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of this idea of it's punishment right. from God that right. we should work. Uh, speak to that a little bit, because it's just—it's it, really a lie that I think a lot of people believe. Oh, and, it is. And work is such a, a good and positive thing. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't know that anyone ever overtly taught me that. It was just I assumed it, right? Because most of us, most of us hate our jobs. We hate our work, right? Like we get up and we go because well, this is what you got to do to pay the bills and support the family, right? And it's just there, there's so much purposeless in it because we we just see it as kind of that. You know the rat race or whatever they would call it. I don't know what they, yeah. how they refer to that here. The right? grind. The maybe. grind. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and so I think we always just assumed we work because if you're a faith based person, I'll say it this way: right. we work because Adam and Eve sinned, and if sin had not come into the world, we'd all just be sitting around binge watching Netflix all day, right? Scrolling through our Facebook <laughs> the feeds. Good life. Yeah, that'd be the good life. <laughs> I, I actually yeah. call it. Uh, do you remember the old Warner Brothers cartoons where like Wiley E. Coyote would chase the Roadrunner and like he would, you know, miss again and he would plunge off the cliff, right? Yeah. And then sometimes at the end of the cartoon, he would float up in the air and he'd be on a cloud okay. with a little robe on and he'd be playing a harp with a little halo yeah. over his head, right? I think that's what we all think the good life is or what we're going towards in this life is one day we'll just get yeah. to lay on clouds and play harps all day, right? <laughs> But, but it's just not true. If you actually go back to Genesis 1 and 2, we see God was a working God, um, even as he created it. And I, I don't have my, my Bible here, so I'll probably mis, misquote this a little bit. But in Genesis 2, it talks about God completing all the work that he had done. And then Genesis 2.15 says, Then God took the man and placed him in the garden to work it and keep it. So right there in Genesis chapter 2, we see God creating man to work, to steward, to be uh, what we call a, a vice regent under God's authority. We are here to take care of creation, to create culture, to add value to the world around us. Yeah. Genesis chapter 2. So if you look at when sin came into the world, it was Genesis chapter 3. Yeah. So... You know, before sin comes into the world, there was work. Yeah. Now, after sin, the Bible tells us thorns and thistles, we will work the ground and it will not produce the way it was designed, right? So sin, according to, to our faith, yeah. sin has impacted our work. Yeah. It has made our work more difficult. It has made our work more drudgery. It has caused work to become all kinds of things it was never designed to be. Like, you know, we look at work as our identity, our work cannot carry that, right? Yeah. We look at we look at work as a way that we can control and manipulate the world around us. Work was never intended to be that. So, but we do have to understand that work was not a result of sin. Work was part of God's design for us from day one, and uh, I think we need to get back to embracing it yeah. with its original design. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, for me that was it was really enlightening yeah. because. Yeah, you kind of just see growing up in church, personally, it was like Sunday was the holy day and the rest of it was like just surviving. Right. Like not being too right. bad, not messing up too much right. and then get back to church right. and replug in at church. And um, and yet there's so many great things happening through work. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that message of, of bringing your faith actually bringing it to work is a really healthy thing. And yeah. I, was, I, I was telling you at dinner that um, a couple weeks ago, I got a chance to be at Salesforce, this big company in, yeah. in the States. And they're all about it. They actually have a movement called Faith Force where they're encouraging mm -hmm. employees, bring your faith to work. And that's, it, it's all inclusive and it's all faiths. And I love it. It's unity in there. And, and people want to be themselves. They want to be their full selves. And so I think this idea of bringing faith and, and work, which primarily, typically we're very separate, bringing them together. And that's, I think you guys are championing that message and bringing that message to many people that have never heard it before. Well, in all honesty though, Ryan, if you look back at the history of the church, I, I mean, even Martin Luther was a big proponent of this, mm -hmm. right? In the 1500s. Yeah. So this is not a, this is not a new thing for the church. It seems to be something that we grasp and then we lose. And then we, then we, we have a, a resurrection of you know, a return to God's design and then we kind of fall off and then, you know, yeah, kind of, yeah. kind of the, the reality of many things, yeah. you know, that, that we have to have these reformations. 
so to speak. But if you look at, at even the life of Martin Luther back in the 1500s, the Protestant Reformation, a huge part of it was the marketplace, the priesthood of all believers, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I, I think this is, this is new, but it's not new. It's new, but it's ancient, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, even if you go back to the Old Testament and the way even God's people in the Old Testament viewed work, uh, it wasn't the way we often experience and interact with it today. Mm -hmm.